Hi, my name is Andrea Earle, and today, instead of talking about putting information on a page, we're going to talk about some techniques for making your pages more interactive. Today I'm going to share with you four easy techniques. The first is move and reveal, then erase and reveal, order and reveal, and finally screen shade and reveal. Let's talk about the move and reveal first. Move and Reveal allows you to put information on a page, have a discussion question, let the students talk about it, and then when you're ready, you can reveal the answers. Move and Reveal is a very simple technique in that you only need to create a box, fill it in with some color, and then move that box on top of whatever information you'd like covered. Now remember, when you create a box, because notebook objects layer on top of each other, Whatever you create last will be on top. So once you've created your boxes, you may have to change the order. And remember, the order will change in your drop-down menu under order. The second technique I want to share with you is erase and reveal. This is a really technique. The kids love it. You can again, and when you're ready, you simply pick up the eraser and you erase the information and here it is. The kids love it, they think it's magic. But really, the technique is very simple. You select a pen, pick the color you'd like. So in this case, I'm gonna pick blue since you know we wanna create kind of a lake effect. Uh, we can come over here to our properties tab and change the color, the width of the pen to maybe very thick. And then I simply color in the blue lake. And I can just draw it around and fill it in and then I have a very nice fill area that I can erase later. And if your page has gone a little too long, you can always erase part of it to start, okay? To get it the way, to get it to fit the way you'd like. The third activity I want to show you, let's go back to the page sorter view is called um, hide and reveal. So you have information, whoops, I already got it showing here. You've got some information hidden on the page. And again, we use a layering technique. You can ask the students to name the parts of the cell. Maybe they're writing it on paper, maybe they're um, sharing aloud or working in groups, or maybe they've got manipulatives in front of them. But when you're ready to show them or to review the answers with them, you simply move the magnifying glass over the answers. A nucleus. You see how they show when they're revealed when the magnifying glass is placed over them. Again, this is a great, again, this is a great technique and it involves layering. Let me just show you very quickly. If I go to, um, if I click the background and in my properties tab and I change the background to a solid fill, you can see how the words are written in white. We've got the picture on top, but then the words match the background. So if I go back to having no background, the words appear as if they've disappeared. When in fact, they're just hiding because they're, they're blending in with the background color. The next technique I'd like to show you, let me go back to my page sorter here, is um, a little further down, uses the screen shade. Screen shade is another way to have a lot of information on a slide, but not to have uh, the students distracted by too, too much information all at once. So say you've got the topic of 18th century scientific discoveries. Maybe the students will be brainstorming and talking about ideas. You can then slowly reveal bits of information at a time. You just grab the little knobs, of the, of the screen shade, and you can move it over slowly to review, to reveal small amounts of information at a time. The second way to reveal is you can also, the screen shade also works, let's close it up again, um, in a downward motion. So you could also be um, revealing information in this direction. I really particularly like screen shade for math because if students see five or six problems all at once, they'll want to do them all instead of thinking about one and discussing it first. 
So this way I can reveal just small bits of information at a time. Now remember, the screen shape can be found on your menu bar. Okay? And it's right here. And if you're done with the screen shape, you can either click the X for it to disappear, or if you want it back, you click the screen shape button and it covers whatever it is you want covered. The other nice thing about the screen shade is wherever you set it, when you save your file, it'll remain there. So when you come back the next day or when you go to use the lesson with your students, it'll be, it'll be saved in the exact right place. Okay, now I'd like to share with you one more hide and reveal activity. It's similar to the magnifying glass activity. I call it the magic tube. The magic tube is a great way to increase student motivation. For example, this is a lesson on scientific notation, but of course I don't tell the students that. Instead, I have some numbers in the input. And what I'll do is I'll choose a number, and I'll drag it through the magic tube, and out comes a different number. What I do is I have students write the input and the output in their math journals. I then choose another number, which I then drag through the magic tube, in this case, 240, and out comes 2.4 times 10 to the second power. As I continue using the magic tube, the students begin to see a pattern, and they're able then to predict what's gonna come out of the magic tube. Now, let me show you how I created this. We're gonna go ahead and go to a blank page. To create the magic tube, you need to first create two boxes. So I'm going to start with one box and a second box. And what I want to do is I want to think of two colors that um, will contrast well. So for my first box, I'm going to choose, let's see, try to grab, oh, go back to the selector tool, there we go. Okay, for the first box, let's choose pink. And for this other box, let's choose, I think dark blue is good. Those contrast nicely. Okay, and the fill color is blue also. All right, so now I have my two boxes. Oh, you know what, on this first box, let's go ahead and change the outline to, um, to pink as well. So the fill color, fill color and the outline color are the same. That way it really doesn't look like two separate boxes. And let's delete this. Okay, the second thing I want to do is now create the content. So maybe I'm doing um, a spelling lesson for first grade and students need to learn the plural of box and fox, axe. So what I'll do is I'll think of some words, I'll bring up my on-screen keyboard, and um, so the first word I'm going to type is box, B-O-X, space, 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 and then boxes, B-O-X-E-S. Okay, that'll be my first two words. I think I need a few more spaces in here. All right, now I'm going to create another text box, and this time I'm going to do fox, F-O-X, a bunch of spaces, and then F-O-X-E-S. Okay, done with the on-screen keyboard. Truthfully though, when I create these lessons, I will do it on my computer because it's much easier to do the actual typing. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to change the word fox into this pink. So I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna pick pink and I'm done. The plural though, I'm going to highlight and I'm gonna turn it blue to match this background. So. Oh, I think it did, okay. Now, if I were to take this box and move it, you can see fox, but the word foxes disappears. If I move it to the right, foxes appears, and the singular fox disappears, okay? Let's go ahead and do the same thing with box and boxes. Again, I'm gonna change box into the pink, and I'm gonna change, and look, it looks like it disappears and I'm going to change boxes into the blue. And again, you can see how they're revealed when they're on the opposite sides. Now the last step is to create the magic tube. I simply did that by going to my to the gallery and I did a little search for cylinders. So let me just type in cylinders here. 
apply. We'll see what we get. Whoops. I guess I spelled cylinder wrong. Let me just fix that. Okay, search. And here we have our cylinder. So I drag the cylinder onto my background, close the on-screen keyboard, and you'll notice, oh, I must have bumped that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here's my cylinder. Make it a little bit smaller, it's kind of big here. I can change the color of the cylinder again by going to the properties tab. Maybe I'll make it, uh, let's make it yellow. And now, I want to be sure and lock it in. I don't want the students to accidentally move it when they come up to move stuff. And then I just move my words over to the blue side of the screen. Now, I can have students come up, or I can do it, and they drag Fox into the magic cylinder, or the magic tube, and out comes Foxes. Then, drag Box into the magic cylinder, or the magic tube, and out comes Boxes. If you have enough examples, students will begin to get the idea and they'll begin to follow the pattern and realize that the plural of ox is oxes. Well, thank you very much for listening. This has been Andrea Earl with a short um, smart board tutorial on how to make your lessons more interactive using reveal techniques. Thank you.